we just learned about the point slope form. Real quick recap here. We had the equation, the formula for finding the slope. Here I am, I'm writing it. And what we did was we multiplied by x2 minus x1 on both sides. Okay. On the left side, nothing spectacular happened, but on the right side, x2 minus x1 divided x2 minus x1, and we're just left with 1. And we wound up just with a little bit of uh, finagling. We came up with this equation, y minus y1 equals 10 times x minus x1, where this guy here, the slope, and this y, this x, right, make up the x and y of some point. So if I have a slope and a point, I use a point slope form. I can also use the slope intercept form, and if I forget, you can remind me to show you how we can use the slope intercept form. So what we need is a point and a slope. Here we have two points, so we can actually choose between either of the two points we need, but we don't have y. Or x. So we got two x's. We got an x here, we got an x there. I mean y. y. A slope. A slope. We don't have a slope. Can we use these two points to find a slope? Yes. How? 3 minus negative 9. What about it? Well, it's wrong. Ooh. How? 3 minus negative 9. Where does that come from? It comes because it's three six. Minus 3 minus 5. I said 5. Yeah, okay. It sounded like negative 9. Huh. <laughs> oh, I just said that. 5 and negative 9. Okay. That was Three minus five, and then <coughs> negative three minus negative nine. Okay, now we agree. I had to teach Bridger this way. Negative two, negative three plus, or sorry, uh, negative three minus negative nine. Negative three minus negative nine. That's negative three plus nine. That's, that's six. That's nine negative nine. one third. Right? Negative one third. Yeah. So that's the slope. Now we have the slope, and we have either of these two points that we want to pick. Okay, we can use the point slope form. But the instructions say, to write it in slope intercept form, so we're going to have to rewrite it once we get there. For those of you who wanted 11, this is the, you know, 11 gives us a point, it just tells us a point and a slope. So with 11, we do the exact same thing as we're doing right now. We use the slope intercept, uh, point slope form, y minus, what would we put here? X1. Oh, y minus, does it say x1 right there? Oh, no. Y1. Remember, it comes from the slope formula, which is y2 minus y1, or y minus y1. Y is two y's, yes? Negative 1? No. No, not, not. Yeah. Three. Three, sure, three. Yeah. That's a y value from a point. We could have also chosen five. Okay? So this is what we'll call y1, right? y minus y1. This is what we'll call x1. Right. We chose a point. We don't care about this point anymore. We're using this point. Right. So y minus 3 equals the slope, negative 1 third, times x minus the x value from the point, which is negative 3. Minus negative 3. If we were going to leave it in point slope form, it would look like that. It would be done. And that's what the answer for 11 looks like. Right? It's mm -hmm. just in point slope form. Mm -hmm. point slope. We're up to us. We're just on a desert island and nobody's telling us what to do. We just do whatever we want all day long. We just leave it maybe in point slope form. But it asks us to write it in slope intercept form, so that's what we're going to do. So it doesn't matter which point we choose? It does not. Because whether I choose, I'll show you both. I'll show you both. Y minus 5 then mm -hmm. equals negative 1 third times x minus negative 9, which is y minus 5 equals negative 1 third. So we'll do to both of them. We will rewrite them in slope-intercept form. You'll see that they're the exact same equation. Because uh, you might say, well, that's a three, that's a nine, but also this is a negative. That, that's a five, and, and that's a three. So, right, two things have changed, and so uh, it turns out it makes them act exactly the same way. Right. So to get it in slope-intercept form, slope-intercept form, just to remind you, is y equals mx plus b. That's slope-intercept form. We need to get y by itself, right? Right. Tyler helped us do this the first time we ever did it in this class. Put it in the first place. Plus 
3. Let's add 3 to both sides. That will get y by itself. A little bit of more work to do here. But yeah, negative 1 third times the parentheses here, and then plus 3 at the end. Up some more. Distributed property. Negative one third distributed into there. Y equals negative one third x plus one. Minus. It's a negative one third, right? Negative one third times three, negative one plus three. Y equals negative one third x plus two. So when we get this in slope intercept form, it's going to be exactly the same. That's the proof that those the exact same equation. Yeah? But that one equals plus two, and the one on top equals plus three. The one on top. Wait, wait, wait. wait don't let me finish right now. Yeah. I didn't write it down. So I didn't know what it was. Okay. So, regardless of if you knew what we were doing. Oh, question. Yes? On Fridays, do we have any extras? Are you that a good question for right now. We're working on yeah, this really, what the heck? Well, I minus five equals negative one third times x plus the time. So we could, in the exact same way as we did in the previous one, add five to both sides. Y equals negative one third times x plus nine plus uh, five. That one. We'll distribute the negative one third as we did in the other one. We get negative one third x. What's negative one third times nine? section reminding you what the point slope form looks like. Well, we just that say, quest? yeah, yes. I'll put it on the top. Wait, we are? Yeah. Tuesday. What? Tuesday. Tuesday, 11, 24. Oh, so next week. That's right. Oh, have 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 this when quest is not two days ago. Can we have one like Jakarta? Mm -hmm. um, what? Home work. Home, home work quiz. What about it? Can we have it like on top, the quiz today? Sure. If I don't remember, you remind. Okay. Wait, we have a quiz today? Yeah. Uh, okay. Like right, review. Stop talking. And now I'm going to show you the same problem done with the slope intercept form. So we had, um, just rewrite all this information here negative 9, 5, negative 3, 3. Negative 9, 5, negative 3, 3. Still need to find the slope, but we know what that's going to be. Negative 1 third. So now I'm going to use the slope intercept form. Y equals mx plus b. Well, I know the slope, don't I? Right. Yeah. I know an x. Right. I know a y. Right. Mm -hmm. I just don't know what b is. Right. So well, 3, that's the y value, equals negative 1 third times the x value of negative <coughs> 3 plus b. We're going to figure out what b is, and then we'll have b equal to b. 3 equals negative 1 third times negative 3 is positive 1. Subtract 1 from both sides. 2 equals b. And now y equals negative 1 third x plus 2. I got a question. How did you get that? This? No. This? Go over. Up. This. No. This. No. Go down. There. Yeah. <laughs> I get this. Okay, so we plug in the line. I mean, line. go up. Go up. Right here. No. Right there. He just yeah. explained that one. I'm starting to think you're punking me. No, I mean that's it. That's what I mean. How okay. do you get negative one? Is that How do you get negative? I didn't get negative I mean, one. That's minus one. So I got negative one third. That's the slope, right? Slope. We found the slope earlier on. So we didn't need to recreate all that work. We found the slope of one third, negative one third. <coughs> so there's negative one third. And what's this? This is x, right? The x from this point. 
Once this is three, this is y, this is the uh, y from this point. We could have used this point as well. It's going to be just the exact same thing. I just chose this point. Okay. So that negative one third times negative three, if you, if you want, you could do that the long way, just multiply it together straight across. Negative one times negative three is three. Three times one is. Wow. Yeah, I don't know where it is. Right there, that's what I'm always getting. Oh, I see. That's a three over three, that's one. That's why we have one. Then we subtract one from both sides of these. Where did one third come from again? The one third Negative one third. Oh, yeah, I forgot. You got it. So we got it from up here. Yeah. Yeah, that's how you do the full. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. I think on your um, problem solving there, that you had um, the answer as. And negative, negative one third, but it's only supposed to be a negative one third. Negative one three. I saw this equation. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Sixteen. It's supposed to be a negative one, right? Just up on the top, not the whole problem being negative. Well, they're equivalent. Let me just run this through with you. Negative one third. The fraction negative one third. Right. It's the same as negative one over three. It's the same as 1 over negative 3. They're all the same. Uh -oh. yeah, negative 1 divided by 3 is going to be a positive. Oh, sorry, a negative number. Negative divided by positive is a negative. What number is it? It's 1 third. It's negative. Negative 1 third. 1 divided by negative 3, that's a positive 1 divided by a negative 3. Positive divided by negative is negative. Negative what? Negative 1 third. Negative 3. So whether we call it negative, the fraction, the whole thing, right? Like I guess, uh, let's use one half because we can use a calculator to kind of convince ourselves. Negative, the fraction, one half is the same as negative one divided by two is the same as one divided by negative two, right? If I take my calculator, I can prove it. One, I guess we're going negative one. Negative one divided by two, that's negative 0.5. One divided by uh, negative two, Negative 0.5, negative one half equals negative 0.5. Yeah, after all the time. That's what I thought. Sweet. But if it's like negative one from negative two, it's positive. Yeah, negative exactly. one from negative two is positive one half. Even I'm from Okay. Uh, 19. Uh, Not oh, nice. I don't know. 19, thank you. Oh, yeah. We're going to have to are we going to have compound inequalities on our thing? No, that's for, that's for uh, the high school class. We are like the high school class. Cars! After it is purchased, the value of a new car decreases $4,000 each year. After three years, the car is worth $18,000. Write an equation that represents the value V in dollars. Blah, blah, blah. blah, blah, blah. Okay. So. This four thousand dollars per year. What's that? What's that sound like? Four thousand dollars x. Four thousand x. What is it? Four thousand x. Negative. It's negative, right? It's, it's what you said. Rate. It's a rate. Yes. It's a rate. It's a rate. Okay. And that translates when we talk about the graph. That's the slope, right? So if we're thinking about our point slope form. Right, that rate translates to the slope. So I could just say, well, this, this point slope form is going to look like this. Right, there's the rate, there's the slope. Only I need a point. I need a point. Do I have um, a point? You can, you can figure it out. Have one. Well, let's read the rest of the problem. It says, after three years, the car is worth $18,000. 18, three years, 18, 18, yeah. 18, yeah. Is that the next point? 18,000. 18,000. And three. Comma three. three. Yeah. Boom, Ethan, take no. team. What, what? what do you think, Aiden? Mm -hmm. It says after three years, then the car is worth 18,000. And it was. You gotta think of. Uh, Input and output. Am I going to input that how much it's worth into this function? No. Or am I going to input how many years it's been? And how many years. How many years. How many years, right? So we just want to switch it. Does it really matter? Yes, it really does. 
380,000, okay? Because X represents how much time has gone by, and Y represents how much money the car is worth. All right. So now that I have that, I, I have a point, a data point. And so I'll write Y minus what? 18,000. 18,000 <laughs> equals negative 4,000. Equals negative 4,000. X, X minus plus three. Three. Nine minus three. three. Minus three. Yay. Nailed it. Now, the equation definitely will work. Now this is where it gets fixed. Good. Distribute. Yes. Let's distribute. I love distributing. Okay. It's like not that hard, but it gives you a sense of accomplishment. Plus, plus three. Add oh, no. oh, oh, eighteen thousand. Oh, my Jesus. Add eighteen thousand. Thirty thousand. Plus thirty. So, what do we know about the car, the car when the person bought it? That it was thirty thousand dollars when it started. Zero time has gone by. Zero for X. Thirty thousand dollars is how much it's worth. Now the eighteen thousand is piece of poop now. Three years later. <laughs> must have been a shadow. Yeah, I must have been a shadow. Oh, brand loyalty time is here. Probably uh, twenty. Yeah. You go back. Ford is probably not a Ford because Ford would be like Ford ninety nine though. Yeah, I mean they are. Uh, yeah. People they go up in value. Yeah. yeah. I have to go on. There is a video, but if you need to, to recap that. 20, circumference of some circles. Here's a circle. It's two centimeters. No, just two. Two. Radius is two. And a circumference. What is a circumference? What does that mean? The distance around the, the, distance around the whole thing. All right, you walk all the way around, and you measure how long you walk. And that part is four times <laughs> high. So the circumference of this guy is four pi. I didn't even know that. If we had, if we had uh, a circle that was three in di uh, three in radius. Four times pi. Equals six. Six times pi. Yeah. So we have the points two, right? The radius is two. That's the input. The output is the, the circumference of four pi. Uh -huh. four so three comma six pi. Just a plot of points. That's what we were all supposed to do. Yeah. Two comma four pi. How big is pi? Three point one four. So three point one four times four. Twelve point five eight six. Twelve point five six. Twelve point five six. So uh, let's call this three. Tyler, I'm going to drive someone with the water bottle. <laughs> remind me of my three-year-old Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> this guy who gets a rage face. <laughs> I am the rage monster. Bring the hole. Bring the hole. Bring the hole. So 2 comma 12.56. 2 comma 12.56. And 6 times pi. 6 times 3.14. It's like 18. It's like 18.5 So a diameter of three gives us a circumference of, okay, that's 18, 18.83, 18 something like that. 84? Yep. Oh, eight, okay. Oh, fix it. There we go. Can you get it? This goes right down like that. Zero diameter, zero circumference, right? Zero radius, zero circumference. Yay. All right, so we're going to use the point slope form, y minus y1 equals n times x minus x1. So find the equation for the circumference, give it the radius, where x is the radius and y is the circumference. Yeah, that's what I thought. So we need to find the slope, though, right? Yeah, so then you'd put... Um, 6 pi minus 4 pi equals over... 3 over 2. two now pi. that equals 2 pi. 2 pi over 1. So the slope is 2 pi. 2 pi over 2 pi, two pi times <laughs> x minus and it's a 3. 3. And then that one equals y minus, y minus 2. 4. 4 pi. 6. So 4 pi. 1. No. 2. Well. No. 4 things. 
two and a half. Six. Six. It's too high. No. <laughs> Four. Four. Pi. One. Four. One. Four. Pi. Seven. Two. Three. Four. Pi. Two. How did you get three as the X? I'm so confused. What did I get three as the X? Maybe if you weren't threatening people with that. It was two. The two. The other radius. Pay attention. Six. Pi. Six. Pi. Three. Six. 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 Pi. Okay, sorry. Yeah, like y that. minus 6 pi equals 2 pi times x. 2 pi times negative 3 is negative 6 pi. Yeah, 6 pi equals size. Now that's 12 pi. No, this is negative, this is positive, so they. 0 pi. 0 pi. 2 pi x. Where x is the radius. And y is the circumference. Circumference equals 2 pi r. I just thought of the... Yes. Okay, so that y minus y, mm -hmm. is that the same y from the same point? Or is it yeah. Y? Yes. So if this x and y, this or y1 and x1 need to come from a point, they need to come from the same point. If you pick a point, like if you pick 3 for this guy here, which we did, then this needs to be the y from the x that has a 3. Well, what about the other y in that? So, uh, and then that's a different point. This one? No, uh, one. Yeah, this one. This is the variable y. And that's the variable x. And that's the variable x. Okay. We need variables in our equation so that if we don't have a variable x and y, there's no way to get points by plugging in x's and getting out y's. side we have y plus 2 right, equals negative 7 fifths times x minus 10. That way. Distribute, Sarah says. So we're going to distribute the negative 7 fifths and we're going to get negative 7 fifths x. Negative 7 fifths times negative 10. What's that going to give us? Negative times negative is positive. Negative times negative is positive. 5 divides 10, we're left with 2. 2 times 7 is 14. Y plus 2 on the other side, subtract 2 from both sides, and Y equals negative 7 fifths X plus 12. I totally got that. I did. Alright, so I didn't think it through, and I put. Even though it was negative 10, I just put 2. I didn't think it was, wasn't thinking it through, but I got that I got positive 12. Well, don't get full credit for correct answers that are lucky. But you did do the work, and you got the right answer. I did most of the work, but most. Well, I do get partial credit for it. You get the job. I hate I you got to do like that. <coughs> what? So I didn't like to do the job. Oh, you left it like uh, this? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, unless I say, right, if I say write an equation, this is an equation, and it will make a line. If I plug in values for x, and then see what I get for y, I'll get the same line as this, okay? Either way. 
So if I don't say write it in a certain form, you can write it in any form you want, Oliver. Uh, I did it a different way. I just put negative 2 equals negative 7, 5, times ten mm -hmm. plus 2. Right. So I like the way we talked about back here. Oh, yeah. Using the slope intercept form. That thing down right there. So you did it like that. Okay. Good, that works too. What if you just forgot to subtract 2 and we got that bar? Just forgot to subtract 2. You just got like y plus 2 equals negative 7 fifths x plus 14. So that works too. Wait, we can just now do it like that? No, like y minus 2, yeah. y minus negative 2, we can just leave it like that? I would say it needs to be y plus 2. Okay. Uh, we're, we're, we're advanced enough that minus negative 2, we can write as y plus 2. Alright, well, let's keep it going so that we don't run out of time. It's okay, Kevin. Kind of. So now we have two points. We need to use the two points to find the slope. Right. And then we can use the point we want. Right. Here we go. So the slope is going to be 8 minus negative 7 over negative 6 minus 3. Eight plus negative seven. Over three. Nine. Nine. So that's a negative five over three. Oh, really? That's my least favorite question. I'm done. Here's my question. I still have five foot nine in front of back after because I'm going to answer the question. Simplify it. Yes. Simplify it. Always. Always simplify it. So simplify it. Here we go. Some teachers don't like it. Negative five thirds times uh, negative six, or no x minus negative six. X mm -hmm. minus negative six. Y minus eight <laughs> equals negative five thirds times x plus six. Distribute one minus eight equals negative five thirds. Again, if you left it like this, that's going to be fine. But I'm just going to keep going. There. Negative 5 thirds times 6 is scale of 3 is going to divide 6, leaving it 2. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. Plus 8 on both sides. And y equals negative 5 thirds x minus 2. say about these two lines? Parallel. Parallel. What do we know about parallel lines? They never they touch. Never hit. They're amazing. They're, they're amazing. They never touch. They have the same rate. They're going for they the same rate or the same slope. slope or the same constant rate. Change. Oh, change. Okay. Yes, they have the same rate. They have the same slope. They have the same delta y over delta x. Oh, is that what you're looking for? No. Well, that was the third one, the third option. But we'll probably talk most with this word, slope. They have the same slope, exactly the same slope. What are these got? What are these guys called? Perpendicular. What do we know about the slopes of perpendicular lines, Molly? If you multiply them, it equals negative one. If you multiply them, it equals negative one. Okay. Okay. So if one of the slopes is three fourths, what's the other one? Um, negative. It's got to be negative, so that this times this is negative. Four over three. So we call these opposite, right? One's positive, one's negative. That's where they're opposite. Opposite what? What's the flipped over word? Reciprocal. Reciprocal. Okay. So I'd say this is it. This is like the definition of what the, the slopes are. And multiply them together and get negative one as a test to see if that's true. Okay. Good. So if I tell you, just kind of taking a trip back in time here, if I tell you that the y-intercept of a line is 3 and the slope is 5 eighths, do you think you can write the equation that way? Yeah. What would it be? Y equals 5 eighths x plus 3. Oh my god. Are you surprised? No. I would I'm just overwhelmed with joy. Okay, now. Why didn't I make it up for? Just a little bit now. So, make it up. Same as asking why it's 5 eighths. So what if I told you that there was some line and its y-intercept is 3, and it's parallel to this line that has an equation y equals 5 eighths x minus 4? 
then that brings up three equals five a minus four. Oh, so three equals y. I would agree. Does this have anything to do with an, a line that's parallel to it? Yes. Yeah. Nothing to do with it. This is absolutely irrelevant. Where a line crosses the y-axis doesn't tell you anything about some other line that's parallel. The only thing that two lines have in common that are parallel is they have the same slope. The same slope. What's the slope of this line? Five eight. What's the slope of this line? Five eight. Okay. What I've told you is basically exactly the same information in a, a little bit of a riddly way. So what's the equation of this line, knowing that it has a y-intercept of 3, and that's a, it's parallel to this guy? Let y equals 5, 8, x plus 3. Okay. When you embark on this homework assignment, know that all that's really changing is I'm still going to tell you the slope and something else. The slope and the y-intercept, the slope and a point. I'm just going to tell you it by saying, oh, it's parallel to this line, or it's perpendicular to this line. When you say extra, please do four plus you call it extension, two point six extension. So we do four That's no, what it is. It's all saying the same thing, pretty much. So the parallel lines are the side of the perpendicular lines, or the slopes there, uh, they equal one. Have a seat. When you multiply them. So yeah. let's say that I told you that the, there's a line that goes through the point 3, 5, and it's perpendicular to this line, y equals uh, negative 3 fourths x plus 1. Okay. So if this line that goes to this point is perpendicular to this line, then, then you find the oh, next point of that, find the slope of so what would the slope of this line be? Negative. Uh, perpendicular to this line would be positive for the third. Yeah, OK. You did. Oh, and then that equals 1. I know. Now I have a, yeah, you're multiplying this slope and that slope to get negative 1. OK. And now we have a point and a slope. And that's what we just got done doing in this last homework, right? Yeah. Yeah. Why did you already text me those problems? Good day. Bye. Why did you already text me those problems? No.